Hi guys, today I'm going to start reading you a chapter book and today this book is called The School Mouse. It's by Dick King Smith. There's not many pictures in it, but I want to read it to you because, you know, I love to read. Also, having a chapter book is fun. So here we go. Chapter one, in which Flora makes a start. Flora was a school mouse. Everyone knows there are house mice and field mice and harvest mice. And everyone knows that mice who live in churches are called church mice. So it's easy to guess where Flora lived. The school was a very old one, nearly 150 years old in fact, and it stood in the middle of some fields. 42 children went to the school, kindergartners, first graders, and second graders, and about the same number of mice fathers, mothers, and children, lived permanently in its crumbly old walls and ceilings and dark cupboards and under its worn wooden floorboards. That's an old school. But of all the school mice, only one grew up to become interested in learning the same lessons as the children, <laughs> and that was Flora. It was though Flora was destined to be a very special school mouse for she was born on the first day of the first half of the new school year in a hole in the wall of the kindergarten classroom. Well, that's good because we all start school in kindergarten. Immediately behind the teacher's desk, there was an old cupboard set in an old whitewashed stone wall. And just above the doors of this cupboard, there was a small space between two of the stones. High up inside the cupboard, a hole had been gnawed so that a school mouse could run up inside and make its way from the space between the stones. <clears throat> from here, if it peeked out, it would have a fine view of the classroom, including a close-up of the top of the teacher's head, <laughs> a couple of feet below as she sat at her desk. I'm glad there are no school mice here. <laughs> On this particular morning, a particular school mouse did not peep out into the kindergarten class for it was much too busy giving birth to 10 babies, one of which was the infant Flora. <laughs> All day long, the mother mouse lay in the hole in the wall and suckled her pink naked babies until school was ended and the children had gone home and the cleaning lady had tidied up and the caretaker had locked up and the old school was empty of all life except for the jackdaws nesting in the chimneys and the school mouse. Then easing herself off her sleeping babies, the mother scuttled down into the cupboard and out between the rickety old doors that never quite shut. One jump and landed her on top of the teacher's desk, another onto her chair down the leg which, of which she clamored. In the middle of the classroom floor, she could see was another mouse pottering about, whiskers twitching. He was searching for any little bits of anything eatable that the children might have dropped and the cleaning lady may have missed. What a husband, thought the mother mouse, whose name was Hyacinth. Here I am, brought to bed of ten children, and he's not even been to visit me. And sharply she called out, Robin! Husband, Hyacinth's husband, was an untidy fellow whose coat always looked in bad, badly in need of some grooming. He had lost part of one ear in a fight and the end of his tail in a trap. And the other school mice called him Ragged Robin. There's Ragged Robin. He does look kind of raggedy, doesn't he? <laughs> now, hi, at Hyacinth's summons, he came hurrying toward him, toward her. Heis, he cried, for it was his habit always to address his wife thus, to rhyme with mice. <laughs> Heis, my love, I haven't seen you all day. No, Hyacinth said shortly. Have you been on a diet? No, said Hyacinth, I have simply lost weight. How, said Robin. <laughs> Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> you better come up and see. 
So up the leg of the teacher's chair they went and onto the desktop and up inside the cupboard to the hole in the wall. There, said Hyacinth, and she could not keep a note of pride from her voice, all yours. All mine? said Ragged Robin, and he could not keep a note of anxiety from his voice. Did she expect him to look after this swarm of ugly little pink hairless monsters? For he had never had children before. What did fathers do? Uh, what do I do, Hyth? He asked nervously. Do? said Hyacinth. You don't do anything. It is I who have to feed them and keep them warm and keep them clean and bring them up to be good mousekins. All you need to do is admire our ten beautiful children. Are they not beautiful? Without a doubt, said Robin doubtfully. Ten, did you say, he asked. Yes, as alike as peas in a pod. But here, although he did not, she was not to know it for quite a while, Hyacinth was wrong. Alike in looks and the size of babies might be, and no one watching them as their hair grew and their eyes opened and they began to crawl around the nest could possibly have told one from another. Yet among them, as the weeks went by, as they grew into active and nimble little mousekins, was one a female who was to develop into the world's most educated school mouse. That one, of course, was Flora. Okay, guys, more tomorrow. See you later.